In this tutorial, I'm going to demonstrate a technique for using the Semantic Rhino plugin as a kind of remote control panel for the Grasshopper environment. And what this will allow me to do is use semantic properties to control certain Grasshopper actions. And it creates a pretty nice feedback loop between direct property editing inside of Rhino and the more parametric uh, computational automation that occurs within Grasshopper. Um, the first thing I need to do though is do a little bit of setup. So I'm going to type in semantic panel in the command line to activate the semantic plugin. And let's go ahead and dock semantic off to the side here. And what I want to do is establish a few properties. Now the scenario I'm going to be demonstrating is taking this surface and, using, and use Grasshopper to subdivide the surface on the U and V direction. Um, this is a you know kind of a classic computational modeling technique for say deriving a set of panels um, using a set of division numbers, right? So what I'm going to do here is first establish some global controls in semantic using document properties. So I've activated the property group manager. I'm going to go to this plus sign and I'm going to add a new document property group. And we're going to call this document property group the geometry controls. I'm then going to add a new numeric property to this. And the first numeric property is going to control the U direction of my subdivision. So I'm going to type in U division. And this is going to be an integer based property. And I'm going to use a slider interface to control it. So I'm going to go ahead and set the maximum value up to 20, minimum value to 0. And so I'll have a slider that lets me iterate between 0 and 20. I'm then going to do the same for the v direction. I'm going to create a new number parameter. I'm going to type in v division. And I'm also going to make this an integer value. And I'm going to activate the slider interface and set that to 20 and hit save and save one more time. And what that's going to do is it's going to expose two new controls at the document level here, one for U division and one for V division. And you can see that as I adjust the slider, um, I have options for seeing the, the values change and um, you know all, all sorts of fun stuff there. Um, the other thing I need to do is establish um, my surface um, as being part of the semantic um, property sets. And so these are going to be object based properties. And what I can simply do here is click on my surface and I already have a set of internal properties defined out of the box of semantic. These uh, include area takeoffs, volume takeoffs, layer information, and so on. And that allows those properties to be reported through semantic. And that in essence registers that object with semantic. So I'm going to go ahead and assign that. And so now I have this um, object here. You can see it's getting some information here. So I don't need to do any custom property creation for this exercise. I just need to you know, register this object with semantic. What I now need to do is create a report. Um, the report will uh, display information about this object as well as the state of these controls. So I'm going to go ahead and close my semantic property group manager and I'm going to open up the report manager now. And here what I can do is add a new uh, report query. And in this case I'm going to call this report query remote control because we're going to basically be using the report query as uh, a pathway into Grasshopper. And the, as the report query updates with new semantic data, that's going to impact the Grasshopper world. So here, um, I'm simply going to call this report remote control. Um, I'm going to use, say, the layer uh, name as uh, of my object as my um, uh, one of my dimensions here. I'm then going to find my U division property that I created as well as my V division. So what this is going to do is it's going to produce a report called a remote control and it's going to list uh, the layer property as well as the U and V division values from semantic here. I'm going to hit, hit save and I'm going to go ahead and activate that query. And what we can see is that we have a default layer and we have uh, 7 and 13 and if I adjust my slider controls here you can see that that report is updating with those new values. So now what I want to do is now that I have this setup, now that I have my uh, object registered with semantic and I have a couple of these properties, I'm going to use the semantic grasshopper tools 
to drive um, a grasshopper definition. So I'm going to go ahead and type in grasshopper, and it's going to load the grasshopper plugin. And, um, it, and with semantic installed, it's also going to load the semantic plugin for grasshopper. And that allows grasshopper to communicate with this semantic plugin here. So um, inside of grasshopper, uh, the first thing I'm going to do is do the uh, do a very basic operation by referencing my surface in to the grasshopper world. And we can do that by clicking on our surface there. And I'm going to go ahead and find the surface parameter node. And I'm going to do right click on that node and do set one surface. Now I have my surface within the grasshopper environment. So that's referenced in. I now need to reference my semantic properties. And so what I can do here is go to the proving ground tab and go to semantic. And we're going to read in our semantic report that we created, this uh, remote control report that's itemizing um, the U and V divisions. And so I can just drag and drop my semantic report into Grasshopper. I'm going to select my remote control query here and select it. And what that's going to do is it's going to auto-generate a Grasshopper component that has the layer name as well as the U uh, division amount and the V division amount. So let's go ahead and inspect some of those outputs here. Um, I'm going to go to the params tab and find the panel node. And I'm going to pull the U division in. And you can see it's reading out six. And I'm going to go ahead and pull the V division in as well. Now, what you're going to notice when you first set this up is that as I move my slider, these values in Grasshopper are not updating with my slider value. And you'll notice that this component has a state called Rhino Silenced. This means that um, out of the box, when you first drag and drop one of these components, this isn't reading values from Semantic Live. And there's a number of reasons why you might want this to be the case. Um, you know, there, there are, as you start to work with this workflow, you might find that there are opportunities for feedback loops between Grasshopper and Rhino that aren't exactly the healthiest um, thing to do because of the, uh, you know, nature of, you know, continuous loops and such. But in this case, we're going in pretty clearly one direction here. So what I want to do is go ahead and right click on this node and, and uncheck Rhino Silenced. And what that's going to do is it's going to set this node into active listening mode, which means that if I start to slide my semantic slider, those grasshopper values are now updating. Um, so we can kind of see the continuity now from the semantic panel to grasshopper. Now we have this kind of ba very basic remote control setup where semantic is acting as a remote control to the uh, grasshopper world here. And now I can start to build up my definition around these controls. And so what I'm going to do here is just do a very simple panel division. And I'm going to use the lunchbox uh, plugin to do this. You can see that we have um, a set of, you know, uh, division components here for panelization. And I'm going to go ahead and just pull out the very basic quad panel division. It lets me take a surface and then divide it uh, using UV parameters. So I'm going to connect my surface in and I'm going to connect my U and V values here uh, for 12 right now and an 8. And what this is now doing is it's you know established for us a U and V division connection with the semantic panel. So now as I adjust my semantic panel properties, um, it is now controlling the, the grasshopper based division. And so this is one of the powerful techniques that you can um, start to employ as you, you know, develop property sets within Rhino proper um, and then use those property sets to control grasshopper actions. This is a very, you know, in this case, it's a very basic setup that's just using U and V division, but maybe you're wanting to use grasshopper to perform more um, substantial calculations and perform different types of analysis. And you want that analysis to be triggered by some event coming from the semantic uh, property world. Um, that you know, that is made possible by this kind of connection, this kind of very basic workflow of establishing property sets and then reading property sets into Grasshopper using our components uh, to trigger different actions. So I hope this was a useful tutorial. I hope it maybe, you know, starts to suggest some interesting workflows that you can employ um, as you, uh, you know, continue to implement the semantic tools in your workflow.